Hi, and welcome to my tutorials on Euclid's Elements, Book 7. This video presentation is going to be on Proposition 9 of Book 7. Again, we are dealing with fractions. This is a little bit different than the um, previous propositions on fractions. We're starting with four numbers, where B is a certain part or a single fraction of A, and D is the same fraction of C. And this is where we start to veer a little bit from the previous propositions. Now we basically are saying, if B is also some fractions of D, then A will be the same fractions of C. If we write this in terms of A over B, either ratios or fractions, in words that we're more familiar with, if we have A over B equals C over D, that's equivalent to A over C equaling B over D. Now the way Euclid proves this relationship is different than what I was taught in school. What I was taught in school was at that time called the cross product rule. I've heard it called by different names, but I was recently told by a mathematician to not use the terminology cross product rule because it detracts from what is actually going on in algebra. So I'm going to show you the algebraic proof here just because and then I will carry on with Euclid's proof. So the algebraic proof, we start off with A over B is equal to C over D. And one of the tenets of, of or properties of algebra is if we have an equality, if we multiply both sides of the equality by the same thing, the equality still holds. So I'm going to multiply both sides of the equality with one over C. So c divided by c is equal to 1, so this bit cancels out. So I'm left with 1 over c times ab is equal to 1 over d. And now I'm going to multiply both sides of this equation by d, therefore, therefore maintaining the equality. So if I do it on both sides, the equality still holds true and I don't want to multiply by D. I want to multiply it by B. All right, so one over C times A over B was equal to one over D. I'm multiplying both sides of the equation by the same thing, so this statement is still true. Now in this case, I can cancel the B with the B, and I'm left with A over C is equal to B over D. So we started with A over B is this, and we ended up with this. And this is the more common way of proving this relationship using algebra. But Euclid didn't have algebra at the time, so he did it his way. And since this is a book on Euclid, I will now carry on with Euclid's proof of this relationship. All right, to prove this relationship, first we start off that A is a part of BC and D is the same part or fraction of EF. Now we're going to divide BC into the parts that are equal to A. So BG is equal, BG is equal to BC is equal to A. And likewise, we're going to take EH, sorry, EF, and to divide it into parts that are equal to D. So EH and HF is equal to D. Now since BG and GC are equal, and according to Proposition 4 of this book, a smaller number must either be a part or parts of the larger number. So BG must be some part or parts of EH, and likewise GC must be some part or parts of HF. Since BG and GC are equal, and EH and HF are equal, 
they are the same parts of, BG would be the same parts of e, EH as GC is of HF. Well now, BC is the sum of all the individual parts of that it was broken into, and EH is also the sum of the individual parts that it was broken into, and the number of parts it was broken into is equal, because we were dealing, of course, with the same fractions to start with. So BC is the same part or parts of EF that GC is of HF and BG is of EG. So BG is some parts of EH. Now A is equal to BG and D is equal to EH. So by the equality, A must be the same parts of D that BG is of EH. And since BG is the same number of parts of EH that BC is of EA, EF, it therefore stands that A is the same number of parts of D that BC is of EF. So to recap, if A and D are equal parts of BC and EF respectively, then B, if BC is a certain part of EF, AD will be the same part or parts of D.